Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I hope you all are doing well. I wanted to share something with you. I usually am not a person who talks about dreams and visions. One of the main reasons I don't talk about dreams and visions are because many of the dreams and visions are personal and when we share personal dreams and visions, uh, I remember what happened to Joseph. It was a dream that got him in the pit and then the prison. Of course, it led him to the palace after paying a price. So many times I am very reluctant to share dreams and visions, but I felt like this particular dream will help you in your journey and encourage you when you get disappointed and let you know that you are not alone. In this vision, I saw myself in the second floor of a huge castle. I saw myself getting dressed. I was dressed in a beautiful ball gown. Um, somewhat, it was not white, it was gray. Not this dark gray, but more lighter shades of gray. And it was huge ball gown, like a Cinderella gown, a huge ball gown that went all the way around. I had friends, girlfriends who were getting me ready and fixing my hair and fixing my dress and putting flowers on me and, and, and just getting ready for this occasion. And I knew it was something was going to happen. And it was just a festive time. I heard innocent giggles and laughters and stories and, and, and it was the evening. So I knew very soon the sun is going to set down and there was an innocent rush in getting ready. I could hear the older girl saying, you need to get ready fast because he is coming. And I had no idea who this he was. This was years ago before I got married. So I had no idea who they were talking about. But I was excited to find out myself as well. After some time, I was looking out through the balcony of the second floor where I was also getting dressed. I was waiting for somebody, somebody to show up on the road. Now, the one thing about this mansion that I saw in the vision was it was a huge mansion with a huge courtyard or a front yard. The front yard was at least a mile away from the gate or from the road. And you can see trees on the sides of it. There were a few plants and trees in the center, but nothing like huge trees. The reason I'm saying is something is going to happen later in the vision, which is, which is out of the norm, but it's a beautiful courtyard. And very soon I hear one of the girls announcing, he's here, he's here, you need to get down. That is to the first floor. The first floor is ground floor in the Asian culture, the lower floor, not the basement. On the second floor, while I was waiting, I saw a limo pull up. It was magnificent. It was big, it was beautiful. It was black in color, polished black. It was very glamorous. It was so majestic and so big that my eyes were fixated on that limo and I wanted the person inside to come out. And it was to a point that I stood at an area that I could exactly see where the limo had pulled up. And I was so excited wanting the person to come out and I did not see him yet. In a little while, while I was dressing, my eyes were still fixated on the limo because I did not want to miss the moment he gets out of this majestic car. And there it was. I saw the door open and the most handsome man got out of this limousine. I was shocked to see him. He resembled someone I know. There was an aura about his presence. He was encaptivating and his presence was exhilarating. I couldn't wait to be in his presence and to watch him and to look at him and to just be satisfied by that glory. Little did I know who he was. Little did I care who he was. See, I was in a vision. I did not control the vision. It controlled me. I was just anticipating to go to the next scene. I was so excited because I knew the person who got out of the limo had already won my heart. By the time I come out with all my friends, I had a basket or something in my hand. I believe I had a lamp as well. And I suddenly see all these beautiful little kids walking down the 
courtyard coming into the mansion like almost getting me ready for the event to meet the person who was outside the gate it was so real as if i am telling to you right now it was it was it is and it will be my reality that's why this dream is very personal to me and very intimate to me because i knew it really happened in the spiritual realm when i saw little kids with little lambs in their hands trying to usher me into the road i heard one of the older girls saying you need to hurry up because it looks like a storm is coming she said you need to move right now because it looks like it's about to rain as well and in a matter of few seconds the clouds came in it was dark it started to get dark like you could still see the sun about to set in the horizon but the dark clouds give it a eerie appearance and i started feeling uneasy and the little kids who had lambs the winds started blowing and the lights started flickering to the point i was worried that if they stay any longer that the lamps are going to be put out and i remember saying in the vision how about you all get back into the mansion and close the door behind me and watch me from the second floor as i make my way out there and the girls were trying to bring in all the kids into the mansion and they ended up in shutting the door now it's me and this road that i have to the courtyard i have to cross to reach the front gate like I said, the courtyard was empty, but the darkness gave it a scary appearance. And I had decided I'm just going to run because suddenly I started feeling the sprinkles of, of rainwater on my face. And I said, this is going to ruin my dress and ruin my hair. And I have to run because no man <laughs> wants to see a woman who is wet, soaked in water. And I remember pulling up my huge ball gown tugging my bow gown in my hand and ready to run. I started running on the grass, but in a matter of seconds, as I was running, the scene changed. This beautiful courtyard that is a mile long away from the main gate suddenly started changing. I feel the earth shaking and the earth is shaking. The grass is splitting, like literally the earth is splitting. And as the earth is splitting, I find, I see these huge creepers coming out of the earth from nowhere. It looks like a horror movie from, from the fairy tale that where you see these creepers and trees and bushes and twigs and um, all of these demonic huge branches coming in filling the whole front yard. One thing about these creepers were, they were not just thin creepers, they were huge creepers as if they were ready to entwine you and kill you. And there were trees that started popping out from the ground. And these trees were huge trees like a banyan tree, which is very thick, very huge, which had its own creepers again. You know, it had those twigs and it almost like those creepers had life and they were targeting me. They were not just growing. They all were coming at me, trying to stop me and hinder my path. And I am thinking the gate is just a few yards away and this thing is going to stop me, not just stop me, but kill me. The tree started growing to up to 50, 60 feet. I am 5'2", and I'm seeing these trees that are so tall, the size of skyscrapers in front of me, filling up the yard, taking up place, the wind, the rain, the storm. You can just imagine what the scene was. It was chaos, pure chaos. These huge creepers that sprouted out of the ground, they made their way. They're just not one, they're many. They made their ways and they started circling me and started grabbing me. And those creepers, they also had thorns on it, almost like a huge thorny creeper. The creeper had life in it, like it was a demon. I felt it was like an entity that had a mission to grab me and to choke me and to literally stop me and these creepers came around tied my hands tied my legs came all the way around my body even came on my neck it was so bad that my hair that was let loose creepers came and entwined in my hair now you know as a woman if your hair is entangled 
it's gone. You can be killed. Absalom died when his hair was entangled in a creeper. You just know that you are, there's no way you can get out if your hair is entwined. It's like bubble gum stuck on your hair. You cannot get out. It's stuck for life. It's stuck for good. You just cannot remove it. I'm looking at myself now. I'm wet. I'm ruined. My dress is shattered into pieces. My hair is all messed up. Whatever lotion I had put, I could see the lotion washing down from my body. I had bruises. I had scars. I am not looking pleasable anymore. In fact, I look horrible. In fact, I look ugly. In fact, I was myself ashamed that I could even think of going in front of this man. And I said, there's no way I'm going to go. There's no way I can move. I was in a very dark and a lonely place. The creepers all around me, trees and bushes and plants and forest about 50, 60 feet tall, wind and rainwater, storms, lashing in a mile radius. Everything is blocked. Everything is stopped. Life came to an end for me in that courtyard. If I tried to move, the creepers started getting tighter on my hands, tighter on my neck, tighter on my on my body that I just felt like I was going to die because they were getting tighter and tighter, literally trying to choke the life out of me. In a little while, night fell. I could see beams of the moon up. The rain stopped. The storm stopped. I was totally immobilized, like somebody had physically restrained me. I was mentally restrained because I knew I will die. There is nobody who can come and cut these branches. Who is going to cut? And it will take days for them to bring a crane or something to cut this forest. None of my friends in the mansion can come out because the forest has, is overtly thick. It's, it's too dense for any human being or animal to be in the forest. And I remember myself being suspended in the creeper thinking, this is the end. I will die like this. And my heart broke when I thought about my fiance at the gate. And I said, no man is going to wait for a woman who is taking hours to come out. And it was to the point that he couldn't see what was happening inside the courtyard because he was outside the gate. He did not know what was happening in there. He has never seen me, you know, but it looked like in the vision, it was all arranged and I was supposed to meet him. And I remember thinking, one thing I desired was to spend this evening with him. And he doesn't even know in what a deplorable place I am, what a dark and a lonely place I am. And I started crying and crying and crying and I knew in this dark forest, nobody can hear my voice. Nobody can see me. Nobody even knows where I'm stuck. I remember being in a state of utter despair, utter darkness, utter gloominess, telling myself I'm never going to get out, telling myself that no one loves me, telling myself that this dark place is my lot. I found some time to think about my life. I found myself asking, does anybody love me? Does anybody care? Am I good enough for somebody? Is anybody worrying about me? In that spot suspended by the creepers, I thought about every rejection I had, every pain I underwent, every torture and torment I underwent, every abuse I underwent, every neglect I underwent, every backstabbing I underwent, every mockery I underwent. And I think the time I realized that I had lost everything, including my life, I think I mentally gave up. I remember crying out to God. It was not a cry, it was a thought where I'm thinking and asking God in my mind, are you not seeing me? Are you not listening to me? Will you not send me help? 
will you not come and save me? I knew that it was midnight because the moonlight moved from his spot. The dream doesn't end here, but I want to take a second and talk to many of my brethren there who are right now in this situation. Do you feel you are immobilized by fear, by depression, by financial crisis, by addictions, by loneliness, by rejection, by mental illness, by physical illness? What is the creeper that is holding you down? Do you feel physically paralyzed, mentally paralyzed, spiritually paralyzed to the point where you move and if you try to fight it, do you feel that it is actually going to tighten and not loosen? Are you in that situation? I'm asking you, if you are, stay with me. There is hope. There is light at the end of this tunnel. In the middle of the night, while I was crying out to God, I hear as if somebody's cutting branches. I would hear a swish and I would hear a thud. I would hear a swish and a third, like somebody's cutting and cutting and cutting and I could feel branches falling. And I'm thinking, who is so strong to cut this with one blow? Every blow, you could hear a tree falling, a branch falling, a creeper falling. And I say, who, who knew that I was there? Whoever is doing is coming to my direction because when they are cutting these huge trees, I could see that as the trees are falling, the moonlight is coming stronger at me. And I knew that its surrounding trees were still standing, but the moon facing me was becoming brighter because somebody was clearing the way towards me. Somebody knew I was there. The person started coming closer. Very soon I realized it was a man. Man dressed well, a man very handsome a man very 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 charming dressed in the most beautiful tuxedo he's, he has a sword in his hand and he's cutting down branches and cutting down and cutting down and cutting down and he's coming close to me he had a brilliance about him he had a glory about him. He had a glamour about him. He had a class that no other man could stand. He was beautiful. He was beautiful. Not just handsome. He was beautiful. There was beauty in him. He came as a tan man. He looked like somebody, but I'm not going to say who the person is. I really didn't want him to see me in that position, in that wet, ugly state of mind, but it looked like he didn't care. He was more focused on saving me than the way I was dressed and how wounded and shattered I was. As he was coming closer to me, I'm asking him, how did you know that I was here? And this wonderful man looked straight at my eye and he tells me, didn't I always tell you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When he told me that, I just realized who he was. I just realized there was only one man in this whole planet Earth who could tell me that, that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Only one man, and he's distinct. And with a cut, he cut all my branches away, all the twigs and creepers that were entangling me, choking the life out of me. It as if with one cut, everything melted away. Everything just started vanishing. They just didn't fall off. But in his presence, they just started melting away. All of a sudden, the ground started clearing. By the enigma of his presence, by the charisma, it just started melting away. He didn't care I was bruised. He didn't care I was shattered. He didn't care I was battered. He didn't care my hair was off. He didn't care that lotions and everything on my face that I had applied to please him was washed away. He didn't care that my face actually was washed away with tears. He didn't care that I was bleeding. He didn't care that I was wounded. He didn't care anything. The moment I stood in the glory of his presence, everything was restored. Everything became normal. Everything became beautiful. Everything attached itself, fixed itself. It was almost I became new. It was almost that he changed me. He dressed me. He washed me. 
He cleansed me and he made me somebody different than from who I was when I started from the mansion. In his presence, I changed. I became somebody else. There were no questions asked because it was I almost got every answer in his presence. I would just not take off my eyes from this man. He was sharp. He was beautiful. He was immaculate. He was perfect and perfect. Nobody could come close to him. There is no man who could come in his class. He was in a class by himself. He was tall. He was elegant. He was beautiful. He was radiant. He was glorious. He held on to my hand and he walked in front and I held on to his hand and I kept on walking, staring at him, not looking at anything else, but looking at him. I remember him. I was watching his hair. I was watching his body. I was watching his skin. I was watching his tuxedo. I was watching his shoes and he had cleared a whole forest and not a dot of branch or twig was on his clothes and I said what magic is this how is he so perfect he escorted me to the same limo the black beautiful limo that was waiting outside every girl dreams about a fairy tale wedding every girl dreams about a prince charming someone coming and sweeping her off her feet every girl desires to be in the arms of a man that has eyes only for her. Some of us are not physically that fortunate. Some of us are not even married in this realm. Some of us are singles. Some of us are single mothers. Some of us are widows. Some of us are in marriages that are absolutely unhappy. Some of us are in lonely stages. Some of us are teenagers who are struggling to find an identity and trying to find love in the eyes of a boy are you searching for love are you searching for hope are you searching for somebody to trust you are you searching for somebody to come and save you there is only one man who will but you need to call him he's a gentleman he's not going to barge into the door and break down the door but he's going to respect your will this is where self will comes in God does not supersede your self-will. Many times spouses pray for their other spouse and they expect when they pray that the Lord will work a miracle. He will in his own time, but the Lord always is a gentleman. He's always a respecter of people's desires. If you have a wife who is not saved and you're praying for her, but if the wife does not call the Lord Jesus, and does not personally invite the Lord Jesus into her life, he's going to respect that. He's not going to barge into her life. You can ask the Lord to soften her heart, remove the blinders of her eyes. You can ask the Lord to melt her heart, give her a new heart. All of those things you as a spouse, as a husband are responsible. But ultimately the choice to let the Lord Jesus in is the wives. You can never force the Lord on anybody. Each person individually has to accept the Lord. Each person individually has to let the Lord come into their lives. That is why praying for your spouse is important. But they themselves have to accept that they want to change. They want this Lord. They want this happiness and joy and love that you are showing, that you have, they want as well. The Lord is a respecter of people's decision. He will never force himself on anybody. He will stand outside till you call him. You need to call him. You need to ask him to come into your life. You need to ask him to come and take over your life.